Welcome, boys and girls, to our Bible lesson today. Have you ever tried to trick somebody into giving you something that you wanted? Maybe you had to tell them something that really wasn't true. Uh, I know growing up, I um, did that with my brothers and sisters and my friends. And uh, especially, I'm sure, when I got caught, I would probably say something like, ah, oh, but I was just kidding. But Boys and girls, it, it's always wrong to tell uh, somebody a, a lie in order to get something you want. Um, the Bible tells us of a young man who told a lie that cost him more than he ever thought it would. In fact, it's the most cost, it's the costliest lie in the whole Bible. Do you know who this young man was? His name was Jacob. Now Jacob had a twin brother, Esau. Esau was the firstborn and he was hairy. And this picture doesn't really do him justice, but he was also very uh, reddish looking. His skin almost looked red, um, but he was very hairy. And he loved the outdoors, he loved hunting. Um, but Jacob was very smooth skinned, liked staying around home, watching the animals. And the Bible doesn't tell us um, all the details or when uh, he learned to trick people, but uh, I'm sure growing up, he must have become very good at uh, getting things that he wanted uh, from others by tricking them into it and sometimes having to tell them something that wasn't true because one day um, he was fixing some real special nice stew uh, around the house uh, when his brother Esau came in from hunting really hadn't caught much and was starving to death he said um, and Jacob uh, decided that this was a good opportunity to trick his brother into selling his birthright to him. Now, in his, uh, where he grew up, uh, the firstborn would get a double portion of the inheritance from his father uh, when his father would die. And so Jacob wanted that double portion of the inheritance. And so he said, I think I, just, I think I can get Esau to sell it to me. Um, and so he said, all right, I'll give you some of this stew uh, if you'll sell me your birthright. Well, Esau was so hungry, he didn't think about the importance of his birthright. He said, what good is a birthright to me uh, if I starved to death? And so he said, all right, I'll sell you my birthright for uh, the bowl of stew. And so Jacob gave him the bowl of stew for his birthright. What an awful thing to do, uh, to take advantage of your brother in this way. Now God, we know, wanted Jacob to have the blessing, but um, God never wants us to get things by tricking and deceiving people into giving it to us. God will get it to us at the right time and in his way. Um, but Jacob um, decided he would trick his brother uh, into giving him uh, his birthright. But years later, when it came time to get the birthright, Isaac, his father, was was almost blind, it could barely see uh, and tell who was around him. But he called Esau in and said, Esau, go out and get some game and fix me some good, um, a good meal, and I'm going to give you the blessing. Now, when Jacob's mother heard this, uh, she got Jacob and said, listen, I'm going to fix a, some stew that your father loves, and uh, let's dress you up like your brother Esau, I'll go get some of his best clothes and I'll put skins 
on your arms and uh, on your neck and you go in and pretend to be your brother Esau. And Jacob said, oh, I don't know. He, no way is he going to think that I'm Esau. I said, oh, yeah, the, I'll get you the clothes and, and we'll, you'll smell like your brother and I'll put these skins on you and you'll, uh, when he, if he wants to touch your arm or your neck, you'll feel like your brother uh, and you will get the blessing um, um, from your father. And so Jacob agreed and uh, let his mother put the skins on his arms and on his neck. And so um, she fixed the really uh, a good meal that Isaac loved. And so he walked carefully into uh, his father's uh, tent uh, where he was uh, reclined. And uh, Isaac, his father, said, is that you, Esau? Come near. He said, yes, I've, I've got the uh, stew, uh, the meat, and uh, I've come to get the blessing, um, the, the, uh, the birthright a blessing from you. And Isaac said, are you sure it's you? Uh, Esau, are you my oldest son, Esau? And Jacob said, yes, I am your son, Esau. So he lied to his father. And Isaac said, ah, please come closer. And so very carefully, uh, uh, Jacob walked towards his father and put the meats and stew next to him so he could smell and says ah this surely is a um the way i like you to fix it but come near and let me feel your neck and so he rubbed his neck and felt the furs that his mom had put there and grabbed his arms and said yes you you do feel like my son esau and you you smell like my son esau and so he gave Jacob, the blessing of the firstborn, the birthright. But Jacob got it by deceiving his father and lying to him. As soon as he was done eating and getting the blessing, Jacob went out and Esau came in with, with the catch from the field and he wanted the blessing from his father, but his father said, no, I, I just gave it to you. But Esau said, no, I am Esau, your son. And then he realized that Jacob, his brother, had lied to his father and had stolen the blessing, the birthright. And so he was very angry. He says, in his heart and under his breath, where but his mother heard him say, when my father dies, I'm going to kill my brother Jacob. And so what a price to pay for lying to his father. Now he had to run and move away from home because his brother wanted to kill him. And so his mother had him go uh, live hundreds of miles away with his uncle Laban. He says, go. Uh, and find a wife uh, uh, among the um, rel my relatives uh, in Haran with my brother Laban. Um, and she was thinking that he would just go there for a little while and uh, then come back after Esau had calmed down. But it cost him uh, his relationship with his brother. Now his brother was seeking to kill him. It cost him his place that he was living. He had to pack everything up and move hundreds of miles away to live with his uncle. And it also cost him his relationship with his father. His father knew now that he had lied to him. And so that, that hurt their relationship well. So 
what a high price to pay for a lie. But that wasn't the end of it. He went and he found his brother Laban who had a large um, herd of animals and, uh, to take care of and a large family. And so when he found him, Laban received him and says, yes, you please come and stay with us. And, and um, so he did and he helped them around the, the um, pastures and with the animals and with the family. And he uh, helped take care of the sheep because he was, he, that's what he did when he was back with his mom. But um, he had to spend a lot of time out in the fields. But as he, um, as he lived with his Uncle Laban, he got to know their two daughters, Rachel and Leah. And he fell in love with the younger daughter, Rachel. And he went to his Uncle Laban. He said, uh, Laban, I love your daughter, Rachel, and I want her to be my wife. And Laban says, well, that's fine. Um, let's make an agreement. And if you will work for me for seven years, uh, you can, I'll give you Rachel uh, for a wife. And Jacob thought that was a pretty good deal. And that's the way they uh, made arrangements for marriage back in those days. And so the seven years went by so quickly because he loved Rachel so much and he wanted her to be his wife. Um, but when the day of the wedding came, seven years, and uh, they had the big wedding feast, um, Laban took his daughter Leah and dressed her up to pretend that she was Rachel. So he put a veil on her. And so Jacob d thought it was Rachel and um, didn't know that it wasn't her. And so they had a great ceremony and feast and uh, they had the wedding. But the next day when the veil was taken off and he saw, oh, this isn't Rachel. This is Leah, her sister. So he went to Laban, you did an awful thing to me. You, I worked seven years for your daughter, Rachel, not for Leah. And Laban said, well, that's not our custom. Uh, sorry, um, we must give the older daughter in marriage first. If you want Rachel, you have to work another seven years for me. And I'm Sure, the Bible doesn't say for sure how Jacob was reminded, but I'm sure it was at that point. In his mind, he remembered. Oh, I remember uh, seven years ago, I lied to my father and tricked him into giving me the firstborn blessing and took it from my brother, even though I was the younger. Now I wanted to marry the younger sister, but now my uncle has lied to me and has given me the older sister. Now I need to work another seven years if I want Rachel as my wife. And so what a high price Jacob had to pay for his uh, long and sinful behavior, uh, tricking people, and telling lies to get what he wanted. Now, he was the one being lied to, and what an awful price to pay um, in order to get um, the love of his life, Rachel. And so he worked another seven years and then continued to work for Laban, but during all that time, it cost him uh, time with his mother and his family back home. And so this is the most, uh, one of the highest priced lies, I think, in the whole Bible. And you can read about it in Genesis chapter 27, 28, and 29. 
And boys and girls, it's always wrong to lie to get what you want. Even though if nobody finds out, God knows because God is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so because of those lies, Jesus then had to die on the cross for, for our lies and the bad things that we've done. And so in order to, be for, to get that forgiveness, we must put our trust in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. He paid our sin debt that we owe on the cross. And he took the punishment for our lies in all the wrong things that we've done. And so don't, don't get into the habit of stretching the truth or what calling, what doing, what we call uh, telling little white lies because in God's book, they're all sinful and wrong. And lies are always the wrong path to take. And so I trust you'll remember that this week when you're tempted to lie, remember Jacob and the awful price he had to pay uh, in um, telling and deceiving his uh, father. Hope you'll have a great week. Continue to uh, get into God's word, talk to God every day, and trust him. And uh, I trust that you uh, will put your faith in him, that God will continue to watch over you, and hopefully... Uh, we can uh, worship God together soon in his house. God bless you.